Good morning, I'm Simon Stilwell, Chief Executive of Bon Hill Group PLC. I'm joined by my Chief Financial Officer, Sarah Thompson, and we're here to present our results for the year ended December 2020. Bon Hill Group is a global B2B media business serving the financial services, business solutions, and governance communities. Starting with the operational highlights, importantly, we delivered a break-even position, which was set out at the time of the fundraising in April 2020, despite all of the changes in the second half of the year. COVID forced us to reassess the entire business and that led to some restructuring, some new product development, some investment and a disposal. We made wholesale change in the finance team to provide better analytics, stronger working capital management and improved budgeting and forecasting to see us through the challenges of the year. Probably the biggest success was our development of the virtual event format and we delivered 102 from a standing start in the summer of 2020 and our virtual events have continued successfully into 2021. As a result of that switch to virtual events, we saw a 14% improvement in our gross margin to 80%. We also completed our technology investment program, which we've been running for two years, and that's now given us a global IT platform, which improves better operating performance, leads to much faster new product development, better data acquisition, and improved analytics. We undertook a range of cost saving and restructuring activity, which reduced our direct cost base. And we also introduced a new executive committee and a series of KPIs to drive growth within the business units and increase collaboration across the group globally. And we are positive about the outlook for 2021, uh, despite the ever-changing event backdrop, and we look forward to a return to profitability. Let me hand over to Sarah, who will cover the financial highlights. Thanks, Simon. So total group revenue for the year was 17.8 million, which is a 27% reduction from the year before. The announcement of the global pandemic and subsequent local lockdowns put a third of our revenue at risk as live events could no longer take place. As has been mentioned, our successful transition from live events to a virtual platform and the rebalance of product from traditional print to digital has helped mitigate the reduction in revenue Whilst growth profit was still down 11.9%, our gross margin percentage actually increased from 56% in 2019 up to 80%. Adjusted EBITDA was broadly break even for the year, but a £6.6 .6 million impairment of intangible assets meant that our op operating loss was £7 million lower than in 2019. Half two did, however, see the first positive operating profit half since 2018. We finished the year with £1.3 million of cash which was materially ahead of internal expectations. And I'll come on to talk more about cash later on. In response to COVID-19, we undertook a range of actions throughout the year. With investment news, we'd previously launched a new website and we undertook a new strategy to move outside of our historic news format. We had a strong virtual event performance in the second half of 2020, and we saw an encouraging move into adjacent markets, including FinTech, the retirement planning advisor market, and the registered investment advisor market. We stopped our weekly print title in March, but then restarted again in July on the back of customer demand. But in the interim period, we launched a digital magazine, which we have continued, and that has a current circulation of 90,000. Within last word media, we saw an effective transition to virtual events for the second half. We made extensive headcount reduction in the business and closed our European and third party events businesses. And we expanded our existing brands to maximize our revenue opportunities, and that led to investment in ESG clarity to create global coverage. We had a range of new product development initiatives, including the development of Last Word Create, our content marketing business, the new Spotlight On series, and also some independent fund manager brand research work. Business Solutions was probably one of the success stories of the pandemic within our business, and that saw a five-fold increase in registered subscribers, a 36% growth in revenue, and strong client activity and new development as small businesses sought news and advice in dealing with the global pandemic. We also saw 20% growth in what investment, driven by new quarterly supplements, reduced competition, and also widely increased interest in personal investing. In this business unit, we saw the disposal of growth company investor, which was non-core. Finally, within governance, we had a successful transition to a new virtual summit format and a 120% increase in our registered database. All of our women in brands now sit under our diversity queue format, which enables us to address a broader diversity market. 
In order to try and mitigate the financial impact of COVID as much as possible, we undertook the following initiatives. We continued with the headcount restructuring that began in 2019 and extended this to close our European events business, as well as streamlining our sales and events operations teams as we moved virtual. We moved to a single site office in the UK from October and closed one of our US offices in Chicago. The New York office lease was renegotiated and will provide cash savings into 2021 and the UK office will move to another location from May this year, also releasing cash into the current year. By negotiating with some of our key suppliers, we were able to extract global synergies, particularly within IT spend, and we also reduced our print and distribution costs for investment news. As with many other businesses, we've been supported by government aid. We took out a $1.1 million Paycheck Protection Programme loan in the US in the first half of 2020, and this was subsequently fully forgiven in December and converted to a non-repayable grant. In the UK, we took out a £50,000 bounce back loan and deferred both our VAT and PAYE payments. The PAYE was fully repaid in 2020 and the outstanding VAT balance will be repaid by July 21. We also received circa £160,000 in furlough income. As we continue through 21, there is still a lot of focus on working capital management. We successfully claimed nearly £200,000 of R&D tax credits and implemented a recruitment freeze in Q1. The vendor loan that has been in place since the acquisition of Investment News will come to an end in August, freeing up more cash in the second half of the year. So I'll now go into more detail on the financial statements. So as mentioned on the financial highlights, we've already covered gross margin and adjusted EBITDA. But below that, 2020 saw the finalisation of the transitional service agreement between Investment News and Crane in August and marked the endpoint for adjusting items, with all integration and migration work complete. We're not expecting any adjusting items to continue into 2021. As mentioned in the COVID response section, we've already talked about the cash that we received as a result of the pandemic, but I also just wanted to touch on working capital and debtors. At the end of the year, our net debt ledger stood at 2.9 million, which was 44% lower than the previous year. And now 67% of the ledger is now less than 30 days overdue, which is a significant improvement year on year. Throughout 2020, we had to contend with the working capital issues that arose as a result of having to cancel all events from mid-March onwards and move them to the back end of the year. Many of our customers paid up front for these events in Q1 or even Q4-19, so when the revenue line started to pick up in Q3 and Q4, this wasn't as cash generative as it would have been in previous years. Instead, the revenue was an unwind of deferred income on the balance sheet. To finish the year with a cash balance of £1.3 million, and indeed to finish February 21 with £1.6 million of cash, is a solid achievement and is a result of the fundraise that we did in 2020, the government aid received, and much tighter internal financial processes. So I'll hand back to Simon, who will take us through some analysis on the events that we did throughout the year. Thank you, Sarah. On this slide, I'm looking to explain some of the changes in our event activity between 2019, 2020, and into 21. In 2019, total event revenue was 11.4 million, if we include Last Word Media for a full year. We reported 9.5 million because we only owned the business for eight months of that period, and that compares to the 6.1 million of event revenue we report in 2020, of which 1.6 million was undertaken pre-COVID. In 21, our expectations is that we will deliver 6 million of event revenue, all of a virtual nature. The financial impact of the return to live events will really depend on the step out of lockdown, ongoing government guidance. It depends on which geography we're in because it's a big difference between Asia, the US and the UK, the event calendar, the vaccine rollout, and then corporate and individual appetite. And so though we're planning for a measured return to live events in the second half, starting in July, both in the UK and in the US, we are monitoring that on a daily basis and could be subject to change. What we do know is that 2 million of the 2019 event revenue will not return because that was part of the European business which we have restructured. I'll now look at our four businesses in a little more detail. Firstly, investment news. This was impacted in the first half with no live or virtual events 
and the stopping of our print title and the rebuild of the site audience post the launch of the new website. Importantly, in the second half, we saw a strong recovery in our digital markets with Q4 up 47% on Q3, and we saw our virtual event format roll out and the development of new products, particularly fintech for advisors. The new strategy of moving out of our historic news franchise is working successfully, both in period and into 21, and we recruited to bring in more functional expertise in the areas of sales, marketing, and content creation. Throughout the year, we ran a print profit improvement plan, which led to a resizing of our weekly distribution. And in 2021, we signed a new print contract, creating some savings ongoing. The development of the new website brought us a number of benefits, including improved ad serving, enhanced subscription management, and a platform for new features. ESG Clarity was launched in the summer of 2020 as part of our global strategy, and we have a range of other global initiatives running, including FinTech, ultra high net worth individuals, a chief diversity officer, and the future of financial advice. What is evident to us is there is brand strength within investment news, and growth in the future will come from offering more products to our existing client base, and then moving into adjacent areas, including FinTech, ESG and asset management, the registered investment advisor market, and the retirement planner market. Last word media. This business was severely impacted because of its large exposure to live events. In the second half, we saw a successful shift to virtual, although we must remember that there was uncertainty all the way through Q3 and Q4 on the return of live events. And therefore the full year was impacted by the extended lockdown. Headcount in the period was reduced by 24 to reflect the changes in our operating structure, the move to virtual events and the likely revenue profile going forward. We recognised the opportunity within the ESG market and we increased our investment within ESG Clarity brand, both in editorial and sales. And then globally, we created a task force in early 2021 to further extend the opportunities we see in this area. The new product development within Last Word Media was around Last Word Create, our content marketing business, and the rollout of ESG Clarity to Asia and to the US. And we launched our Spotlight On series which highlights specific fund strategies. Fund Selector Asia was stabilized and relaunched during the period, and we maintained our Asian revenues despite that business operating under COVID conditions for the 12 months of the year. We are planning for a live event return for both our Congress and Fund Selector event activities in the second half, subject to ongoing government guidance. In our governance business, it was severely impacted by COVID and the postponement of our first half events into the second half of the year. And we had limited live events pre-lockdown where we ran only Women in IT London. In the second half, revenue was down 48% compared to the second half of 2019. However, we did successfully shift to the virtual format, although again, there was uncertainty throughout Q3 on the return of live events. In the whole of the year, we ran 40 virtual events and we see long-term benefits in the data acquisition and the shift to the summit format away from our historic awards activities. Headcount was reduced in the period to reflect our new structure going forward. Diversity Q, with its good growth in traffic, has created the platform for our 2021 global initiatives and has become the umbrella brand for all of our diversity activities. And our new product development includes our FTSE BAME research, our Green Dream ESG video format, our ongoing talent summit, and this has led overall to an agile specialist subject-led event portfolio. Our increased level of global collaboration has led to our Chief Diversity Officer project and the global expansion of our Future of Financial Advice event series. We have also undertaken significant investment in our content production to drive both network growth and increase our activity with the industry influences. Business solutions had a much more positive outturn for the year. Within what investment, we saw revenue increase by 20%, driven up by a focus on the core proposition, wider investment interest, and reduced competition. Investment in the design and the core functions of marketing, editorial, and production in 2021 have been undertaken so that we can expect to double our EBITDA contribution. Within business information, the strong performance from digital saw revenues up 58% from 2019 levels and we exceeded our original 2020 budget by 45%, and the second half saw growth of 37% on the first half in 2020. It is undoubtedly a beneficiary 
of the pandemic and is frequently the number one site for business advice in the UK. Increasing the production of high quality content to address specific needs has led to subscriber growth during COVID. In 2021, we are looking to grow our lead generation and key account management activities, leading to further growth and a website rebrand and increased functionality in the second quarter of 2021 will continue that growth trend. And finally, we can see the growth in the website traffic and the table on the right-hand side with 125% increase in the small business title and within diversity queue, 190% increase. As we move through 2021, there is a lot of optimism surrounding vaccines and the return to live events. As Simon mentioned, we remain cautious with our assumptions and intend to test run a couple of live formats in Q3, guidance allowing. However, we are confident in our ability to switch back to virtual as necessary. Our current internal forecasts are predicated mostly on virtual events for the remainder of the year. We have a number of new products in the pipeline that will hopefully be launched this year and build up momentum into 2022. And as the growth in digital markets continue, we will look to harness this and use our newly enhanced platforms to return to our previous volumes as quickly as possible. As for many companies, we will still feel the effects of COVID throughout this year, but a maintained focus on margin and cost control will help keep us on our path to recovery. So in summary, we are pleased to have delivered in line with the expectations set out at the time of the fundraising, despite the extended lockdown and a year of extreme change. We undertook a swift and robust response to COVID with a successful switch to virtual events, a range of cost savings and tight cash management to see us through the year. COVID forced the wholesale reimagining of the business with a focus on digital first, new product development and brand expansion. We saw greater collaboration and globalization and best practice as a result of remote working and the technology investments made during the year. Our new operating structure was designed to drive growth from the restructured business units, and that has continued into 2021. And the much improved finance function has given us better working capital management, forecasting and analysis. Growth drivers in 2021 will be a combination of a live event bounce back, a continued growth in our digital activities, brand extensions and new product development. We have seen a promising start to 2021 and with the challenges of 2020 behind us, remain confident that we will deliver an improved financial performance despite the changing landscape for live events. Thank you.